One day, while the Buddha was residing at the Chetawana temple, he gave a blessed sermon and then retired to his chambers. After everyone had returned to their chambers, the elder Maha Mokalana came out to ask the elder Sariputta a question. Seeing the two great disciples sitting together, a crowd began to gather. Each person hoped to glean some wisdom or knowledge from the two exalted beings. The Dhamma these two elders discussed was deep, profound, and very moving. Everyone in attendance was awestruck. In the crowd, there was an elderly monk who observed all the praise and adoration given to the chief disciples. The old monk figured that if he could ask a question that stumped Elder Sariputta, he could steal the limelight. Then, all the praise and adoration would be given to the old monk. The old monk pretended to be respectful and crawled out to the front of the group. In an act of false humility, he folded his hands and bowed his head slightly and said, Venerable sir, please give me a teaching about refuting and accepting, about determining and not determining, about knowing and not knowing. These are topics I wish to hear about. The elder Sariputta could easily see through the monk's intentions. The venerable Sariputta knew that the old monk was still filled with desire and defilements. The old monk was acting on wicked intentions and with selfish desires. Therefore, any interaction with the old monk would be tainted by the old monk's mentality. In addition, being an Arahan and a chief disciple, the venerable Sariputta did not want the monk to create additional evil karma for himself. Any evil towards an Arahan, especially one as exalted as the venerable Sariputta, would lead to compounded and magnified undesirable results. So, out of compassion, instead of engaging in a fruitless battle with the old monk, the venerable Sariputta merely quietly arose and returned to his cell without saying a single word. The elder Mahamokalana watched the elder Sariputta leave and then considered the situation. He too saw through the guise of the old monk's seemingly innocent questions. Knowing that the old man was not open to learning or any rebuke, the venerable Mahamokalana quietly arose and returned to his quarters. After watching the two chief disciples leave after hearing his question, the old monk concluded that he must have stumped them and that they ran away in disgrace. He felt proud and excited to receive praise and adoration from the people around him. However, the people were very upset. They realized that the old monk caused them to lose their precious opportunity to hear the Dhamma discussed by the two chief disciples. Hearing the Dhamma, to those who know its true worth, has more value than handfuls of diamonds. The people rose up and yelled, Get this old man! This old fool robbed us of a valuable opportunity! Let's teach him a lesson! The old monk quickly stood up and tried to run away. Not watching where he was going, he ran straight into the cesspool behind the Dhamma Hall. The wicked old monk fell in and was covered in filth. When the people saw him climb out of the cesspool covered in filth, they all ran away in disgust. They felt that this was a proper punishment for his evil intentions of depriving others of the opportunity to hear the blessed Dhamma taught by the chief disciples. The Buddha, hearing the commotion, knew that this was the right time to come out and teach the Dhamma. He asked them, Why have you all come out here this late at night? 
After they told him, the Buddha said, See here, this is not the first time that this old man believed himself to be equal of those greater than he, and in the past, not knowing his own limits, he also ended up covered in filth. Upon their request, the Buddha told this story of the past. Once upon a time, a long time ago, when Brahmadatta was king of Benares, the Podisat was born as a great lion who lived in a cave in the Himalaya mountains. One day, the lion brought down a large animal and ate his fill. After his meal, the great lion went to the watering hole to quench his thirst. There, he saw a boar and thought, I will make a grand meal of that boar on another day. I am too full today. However, if he sees me, he might run away and never come back to this watering hole. I shall leave quietly so as to not bring attention to myself. The boar happened to look up at the very moment the lion departed. At once, a thought occurred to him. The lion saw me and did not attack. Instead, he quietly tried to escape. He must be afraid of me. I should challenge him to a fight and beat him and be known as the new king of the jungle. At this thought, the boar raised his head high and made a challenge to the lion. Oh, cowardly lion, you have four feet, as do I. We are alike, yet you run from me in fear. Therefore, I must be the greater of us. Fight me and let the world see who is the true king of the animals. The lion, confident in his abilities and knowing the truth, was not insulted or angered by the boar's boastful and disrespectful challenge. He decided to play along in order to ensure his future meal would not run away. The lion said, Friend boar, there will be no fight between us today, but if you still wish to fight, let us fight at this very spot in one week. And with that, the lion departed. The foolish boar was overjoyed. He rushed home and told his group of boars about his encounter with the lion. However, instead of being impressed, his story only served to terrify his group. They said, You will be the death of us all, not to mention the death of yourself. You are a foolish idiot. You don't know your limits, for if you did, you would not be so eager to challenge a lion. When the lion comes, he will feed on you, and all of us as well. These words made the foolish boar shake in fear. Then, he asked them, I made a mistake. What should I do? They told him, A lion is an animal that values cleanliness. Spend the next seven days rolling around in a dunghill. Then, let the filth dry on your body. Do not wash it off. This way, when the lion smells you, he will spare your life. The foolish boar did as he was advised. On the seventh day, the boar returned to the watering hole and is expected. The lion was hungry and waiting. However, once the great lion caught a whiff of the boar, he said, This was a good trick of yours. If you were not covered in filth, you would be my meal today. But as you are covered in filth, I cannot bite you or even get close to you. Therefore, you may keep your life. And with that, the boar watched in surprise as the lion once again walked away. The foolish boar returned to his group and bragged how he once again chased away the fearful lion. However, 
The group realized that this foolish boar would never learn. Eventually, his foolish actions would lead to their deaths. So they all ran away and found a new place to live, away from the foolish boar. At the end of the story, the Buddha concluded by saying, The foolish boar of those days is the old monk covered in filth, and as for the lion, it was none other than I myself. What did you learn from this story? We hope you enjoyed the video. Click like if you did, and click subscribe if you want to see our uploads.